Welcome back to another model set. No, it's not this one again. This was a fun design from a previous video. It worked so well that I decided to use it as a starting point of a new design. I recently put this thing through a high speed test and it seemed to fare pretty well. Only minor part failures due to heat buildup. So I figured it would be worthy of continuing with airsoft bearings in another design. I can't show you the full design just yet since it's not done, but you might get the idea of what it is. First things first, instead of using all the random vacation shot glasses I've accumulated over the years, I decided to look online for something that would give it a little more elegant look. Finding this six pack of normal looking shot glasses, which fits my intentions for this build and how I want it to look overall. All right, and while those are on their way here, I ran out to the store and picked up some alternates. These red solo cup shot glasses and these cheap ones from the local Dollar 25 store. I need to pull one of each of these out to gather some necessary dimensions to get a model going. The Solo Cup is significantly larger than the Dollar Tree version, which may cause these two to have two different designs. The first models I had to create for this were the shot glasses themselves. As you can see here, there's a huge variance in size, with the smaller Dollar Tree one on the left, the Solo Cup on the middle, and the real glass on the right. Not too bad so far. Alright, so I said I was going to start with the fidget spinner and make some adjustments to turn it into a new model. This should be fairly simple since it's just composed of three parts. I'm going to start with modifying the inner bearing race. I need to extend one side out. Since I expect this part to support the whole assembly on the tabletop, I wanted to give it a wide base to add stability. The best part about using an existing model to build from is that I already have all the pieces tested out in the previous assembly. Since the bearing cage and balls work so well, I've decided to use them as is, so one less part to model them. And if you haven't watched the previous videos on these bearings, I'll catch you up a little bit. These balls are not printed. I'm actually using some Airsoft BBs as the balls. As you can see here, I have a lot of ammo for new prints that include bearings. This is far from how it actually gets put together, but the cage eventually rests over the raceway like this. And now to the last part that needs modified, the outer race. For this, I simply erased all the fidget spinner geometry from the outer raceway and added some new sketches that should go well with the shot glasses. And then I added some radiuses to the outer edges and some profiled cutouts to the inside for a nice curb appeal. This is turning out pretty nice so far. Let's get these models to the printer. Well, that was painful. Let's try that one again. That's better. The cage. Then the revolver. It's a really quick set of prints, depending on the wall thickness and infill you like to use. Generally though, I like using a thicker wall and heavier infill for functional parts such as this. I think for these I'm at 3mm wall and 30% gyroid. All the prints turned out well. Here on the cone you can see the stitching line on the one side. It's just more obvious on this one versus the bearing since it's much larger. The revolver part came out good. You can see that places for the six shots came out well, along with the pattern features on the inside. These give a little break up to the monotony of this part and actually give it additional strength. Then there's the cage, just a simple reprint from a previous set of models to wrap it all up. And then from there, I'm just going to need eight of these airsoft babies. I'll put them over here in their own special prison. The cardboard here is just a fixture to get the balls into the raceway. I struggled with this a little bit during the assembly of the first fidget spinner. Check out that video if you want. And this uses the same part dimensions, so I'm glad I didn't recycle it yet. It allows the centerpiece with the extended spinner top to sit below the surface that the spinner is on so that the raceways are on the same plane and the balls just fall into place. It's pretty much impossible to get it together without it. Once they're all in, push the inner and outer races to be concentric and it'll just stay together enough to flip around. It spins great just like this, but it will come apart if all the balls fall into one side. Believe me, it's happened. So I need to get this ball cage in place to keep them separated. While my camera struggles with focus on this, I'd like to thank everyone for achieving over 2,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. YouTube gets the first view of the new models which are eventually added to Thingiverse and Printables. I recently just opened up a Make World account as well, so search up Sanford Prime in any one of these to download the files for free. The links are usually in the descriptions. Alright, the cage is snapped in place now. 
There's a lot more inertia to this revolver than what the fidget spinner had as it just became a larger flywheel and it's pretty cool how freely it moves. The test is going to be how the shot glasses fit in it though. Let's check that out now. Perfect. Give it a spin. I think it's obvious that this one was chosen for me by the roulette wheel. My initial thoughts were that the pattern designs on the inside could work as finger holes to spin the wheel, and they do, but I'm quickly rethinking that idea. It's a little bit cumbersome, but they do work for it. I might have to address this later. Well, Alright, let's set that one off to the side and pull out the next shot glasses. These ones are from the $1.25 store, and are noticeably smaller than the Solo Cup ones. I don't know if they're intentionally smaller for a smaller shot size. I mean, look, I can put the entire cup inside the Solo Cup. Because of this, they also fall straight through the revolver made for the Solo Cup. I'm going to have to adjust the sizing a little bit. But hey, no worries, it's a simple sketch with three active dimensions on it. Sometimes I just love using constraints. With a little design intent, SolidWorks just knows what to do. Adding the same radiuses and patterns to this one as the other. And just like that, it's a completely different model than the original. It's now made for the Dollar Tree shot glasses. Since I kept the same centerpiece, these cups are a little higher from the table. I could have changed this, but it was more important to me having the interchangeable parts at this point. Let's get this new part to the printer then. And just like that, it's done. So now I have the smaller revolver plate, which fits the smaller glasses. Both the cage and the center hub are exactly the same as last time. So that means the same assembly technique too, with the same addition of the eight airsoft BBs. Getting my use out of this piece of cardboard for sure. You'd be shocked at how many fidget spinners this piece was used for up till now. My camera decided to stay in focus for this one too. Just an easy snap in place here, and it's ready to use. This one spins just as good as the other one. It's kind of impressive how they just work. Anyways, let's get the cups in place and see how it's going to turn out. Since this one is smaller, the patterns on the inside are a little bit more cumbersome to spin from. I think I'm going to have to address this later. Okay, so they spin good without anything in the cups, and this wouldn't be a proper demonstration without showing how the fluids affect everything. Don't worry, this is just water in all of them. Giving it a gradual spin here, I don't want water slung all over the place. And it looks like the wheel selected this one for me. Okay, so it's becoming obvious to me that this is a little difficult to spin using the, well, what I thought would be used as finger holes in the revolver disc. And I'd like to address the change to this now. I mean, it works, but it brings a certain level of awkwardness to the spinning. And while I was thinking about making changes to this, the glasses came to the door. So I adjusted the revolver plate one last time and made a new print to accept them. And this is what I was expecting to do from the get-go. The plastic cups were just to use up some of my free time and prove the design out. But hey, I ended up with some pretty cool options anyways, right? These glass cups add quite a bit of weight to the revolver and it seems to spin smoother with the increased inertia. You can hear the stitch lines from the 3D print. Well, 
Okay, so what did I come up with to make the spinning less awkward? I chose to make a little knob stick up from the top that uses the three holes in the revolver plate. My idea was just to push it through the holes and use the little C-clips to hold it in place securely. The small dollar store plate has its own special one, but the other two use the same knob. I'm thinking this will make a nice carrying handle too. Well, let's see how it turns out then. Everything can go perfect all the time. But I'm not looking at this as a total loss either. From how far it printed, I'm actually able to get some valuable information out of it. I've never printed C-clips like this before and I just kind of guessed at the sizing, so this allows me to test that part out. You know, I'm not disappointed. And the other thing it allows me to test is the fit in the revolver plate. It'd be silly not to use this opportunity to test this stuff out now. It passes through the hole just fine, and it looks like there's enough clearance on the backside to get the clip in place. So I just want to try and reprint this again, but this time I want to turn the brims on and the slicer to hopefully cure the adhesion issue. Ah, well this is getting slightly annoying. One more time. You know, I think it's probably a combination of things here. To be honest too, it's kind of neat how the 3D printer actually tried to reconnect the legs on this one, but it's still unusable like this. Can't tell you exactly what's going on, but I can tell you that it's causing me to rethink the printing orientation of this part. Originally it was a different shape for the knob on the top, and it was changed after all this to the flat on the top, which allows it to be printed more or less upside down. So that's what I'm going to do here, to hopefully eliminate the overhung legs from the narrow bed plate adhesion surface. And just like that I have the first spinner. It just has a little bit of brim still left on it, which I found out later was unnecessary, but I wasn't taking any chances. And I'd prefer a little extra simple cleanup actually than another failed print. Okay, so how did the three leg pins align with the revolver plate? I hope there wasn't any warpage. Not bad, I can live with that. Just gotta get these C-clips in place. Yeah, this isn't going anywhere. It's pretty secure. It's so much easier to spin with this knob too. I think it was a good choice, but now the speeds which it can be spinned at probably are gonna fling stuff everywhere. Well, that's a separate problem for a later date. So, if you found yourself watching this far into the video, do the algorithm a favor and press that thumbs up button to help others find this video as well. And my challenge is done here, so now I have a challenge for you. Write in the comments what you think are some good game rules for this model. Be sure to tell me what you plan on putting in the cups too. Is it going to be a form of liquid, or maybe a form of candy? 